seconds. Okay, here you can see simple series of digits that are assigned consequently to each sequence record processed by NCBI. When you go for the genome analysis, as I earlier said in this step slide, that is first to decide an organism or a species. So if we have selected Drosophila melanogaster, if we selected this for an example, so we want to analyze genome of Drosophila melanogaster. So here we type in the where it is in the like this, it is like here, this is NCBI. When you click this in NCBI, this window will open this. Okay. So here you type Drosophila melanogaster. This is your organism. Okay. Whose genome you want to analyze. And select from here what you want to do with this particular organism in this in this code. So here we have selected genome. Because we want to identify or we want to analyze genome of this particular organism. So we selected here genome. So when you search, this window will open. So this window shows all overview of the particular organism like Drosophila melanogaster. This is Drosophila melanogaster in commonly named. We can be also always called this fruit fly. Okay. So such type of information you will get from this search. So this is all about the Drosophila melanogaster or fruit fly genome, genome transcript or uh, FASTA sequence, BLASTA or gene bank. All these things are having carrying this particular window. In the downward of the same window, you are able to see the genetic information about the organism. So this is the genetic information. Here you can see the chromosome type. This is X, 2L, 2R, 3L or such type of this. This is the name of chromosome. Reference sequence in this particular table. It shows the reference sequence, INSDC, size of the particular chromosome means the size is given of the chromosome X. This is 23.54 MB. So in case of X chromosome, we can say that the total size of this particular chromosome is 23.54. Then GC contain means percentage of GC in this entire sequence, entire nucleotide sequence of the X chromosome. The GC content is 42.5%. This is protein percent, rRNA, tRNA, other RNA. And this is the important thing that is gene. It means the X chromosome contains 2689 genes. Here we can see. Okay, means 2689 genes carried by X chromosome and 74 pseudo genes. Like this, all the information about the genes, pseudogenes, RNA, tRNA, proteins, GC content, and the size given in this table, all about the chromosomes. Here also given these chromosomes like X, 2L, or all the chromosomes given here as well. So now from here, so here we are able to see this, the particular organism, Drosophila melanogaster, having the number of chromosomes. And these are the specific chromosome having a specific having a specific uh, size in MB, GC content, and the presence of number of genes on particular chromosome. So from here, you can select which chromosome you want to study, which chromosome you want to analyze. So if you want to analyze this particular X chromosome and the genes present on X chromosome, so simply you select this X gene, go reference sequence of this. When you click on this, you will carry forward. You will forward it to the towards this particular window. So here you can see this Drosophila melanogaster. This is the sequence of only chromosome X. This is the sequence of chromosome X. 
okay so because we have selected only x chromosome this chromosome only okay so this is the reference sequence of nucleotide sequence of the x chromosome means this x chromosome having this sequence okay so it is the faster format of the nucleotide sequence of the x chromosome of drosophila melanogaster okay and it is also you have here showing the locus that the locus of this particular genome is nc0043544 okay so from here now you are able to see the entire sequence of chromosome x now you want to see, know about the genes which genes it carries how many genes it carries how much sequence is functional during this entire sequence of chromosome x so now from here you go on genes here genes come in downward because it is screenshot so i cannot scroll it so here comes gene so when you click on gene you forward it towards the this window so this window showing all the genes present on chromosome x and their location their locus gene name gene id and gene description all the information about the genes present on x chromosome displayed here in this particular table you are able you can see here so this is the 1 to 20 genes of 2689 means here it is given how many genes you can see here it is x chromosome here 2689 genes sorry excuse me so it is all about x chromosome genes so these this window will display all the genes gene description gene name gene id their location all these things so here you can see this is as rna this is the gene name as rna description of this gene is antisense rna it is of drosophila melanogaster commonly known as fruit fly gene id is gene id is given below this id 5452511 it is gene id okay and gene id always remains same okay so this is all about only gene single gene that is as rna as rna means antisense rna okay and this is located on chromosome x then location is locus is nc 00435454 this is the first gene first sequence of nucleotide which is functional or functioning among the chromosome so it lies between the sequence that is here you can see the sequence between the 3302 to 2306 here so it is complement sequence in between this base pairs which is responsible for this particular function due to which it is known as antisense rna gene so here you are able to see all the genes their gene location and gene information but now you want to identify the particular gene means only this gene now you have targeted this gene sequence of this gene uh, the nucleotide sequence how much it is long so now you want to see its location on the map and their size okay so from here you can select here click here and go from here to know all about the information about nc sense rna gene so you can select here then you can forward it to do this particular window okay so here it is coming only about this gene nothing about all chromosome or the number of chromosome it is only single gene it is the all information about this particular single gene gene the gene id is this one which we have selected that is 5452051 we have selected this one only yes and this is antisense rna of drosophila melanogaster fruit fly 
so this is all about this is all about this particular gene okay so this information when you scroll down here you can see this particular in this particular table the some information about this particular gene is given here okay like it is located on the x chromosome locus is this it is lies between this sequence complement sequence so all the information we have taken from here now now my curiosity is to know about the gene sequence okay what is the sequence of this particular gene this complement sequence in between this so now i want to know this so by selecting this gene we can go on the next slide then here you can see this is the chromosome x locus of the gene is this and this is the gene information so all about the gene and gene information here you can see this is the particular gene which we are identifying or we are analyzing this is the gene sequence so when you when you analyze this gene this is here you can see this is the gene that is as rna means antisense rna this particular gene we are analyzing title of genome is this location in between this sequence that is we are already looking after it so this is the sequence lies between this then we can see ki what is the length of this particular gene found on the chromosome x so this is 15935 nucleotide long it is the gene so from this from this window you can also see from here this is the sequence up to the 236 here and this is the sequence up to the 302 starting from here it is from here okay so here you can also see the all the formed by blast genomic specific that is earlier discussed in the previous session about the blast and blast genomic first also discussed so from here you can also go for the sequence of this particular gene length is 15935 nucleotide so if you click here in faster view if you click here then and see the sequence then in the coming window you can see the nucleotide sequence of this particular gene here you can see like this this is the initiation or the sequence from where this gene starts and this is the last sequence which i have discussed earlier so from or like this you can analyze all about the gene gene sequence or the gene function all these things can be studied so now i would like to show all these information live so here if we can say Uh, this google slide is my showing this page is google is it is visible yes sir okay. yes it is visible okay thank you thank you very much so okay as i discussed in my previous slides so from here we go live so in the google we type n c b i like this then we enter So this is the window, as I shown, as I showed in my slide. So from here you go this NCBI. Click here. Then this window will opens. Okay. So here, as I said, the first you decide organism or species. whose genome you would like to analyze so if uh, i want to analyze the genome of homo sapiens okay 
so i have written here typed here homo sapiens okay and here i want to analyze genome so i have to select here genome like this this is genome so i have selected genome genome of homo sapiens then i go for search okay so this is all about homo sapiens this is the overview of homo sapiens means overview of organism that you are analyzing so homo sapiens humans all the information about the homo sapiens is given here okay and here all the sequences fasta blasta and all reference sequences gene bank all these things are means summarization of this homo sapiens of an organism is given here when you scroll down this particular window like this then you are able to see all the genomic information about this particular organism so as you very well know that a homo sapiens or humans having 23 pairs of chromosome like this these are 23 pairs of chromosome you can see here like this okay so as i discussed in my pre slides with the uh, uh, help of spin sorts example of uh, drosophila melanogaster so the same table here you can see this type means chromosome chromosome name reference sequence insdc size of this particular chromosome given here gc contained protein rrna trna other rna gene and pseudo genes so these are the genes given okay so these genes found on this particular chromosome number 1 okay so from here if you select it now you want to uh, analyze only chromosome number 1 nothing else okay so you select only chromosome number 1 okay so you go from here on chromosome number 1 so it will show about the chromosome number 1 information it is all about the chromosome number 1 okay nothing about the homo sapiens whole organism whole genome or the all genes present on chromosome number 1 nothing okay so this is all about the chromosome number 1 so this is the this will show all the information regarding the genes present on chromosome number 1 only so these are all the information about the organism which you are analyzing and these are the authors so by which this particular information have been submitted to the database okay so now i would like to or i wanted to know about the entire sequence of this chromosome number 1 so for to see this Uh, entire sequence or nucleotide sequence of chromosome number one. We select for go from here first. It will show the nucleotide sequence of that particular chromosome like this. Now you are able to see the entire sequence of this particular chromosome. Okay, so it is very long, very long. or uh, very lengthy sequence you can see here okay so about this all about this uh, chromosome number 1 it is having about 5000 genes approximately 5000 genes it is having means this particular sequence this sequence they are having around 5000 functioning sequence that sequence responsible for a particular information or particular trait so from here we can see we can go for the genes see how many genes contains or it is having means chromosome number 1 so from here you can see either in right side here is given genes here genes so when you click on this gene it will show the all genes present on chromosome number 1 like this So this is the information about the gene you can see here okay so like this particular gene okay this is uncharacterized this is crispr cas palatated for cis regulatory element present on chromosome number 
locus is nc 0000 1.11 okay this is the locus and it is lies between the, the sequence of this particular gene which is responsible of validated for cis regulatory element it is lies between this sequence you can see here 9419 to 9875 it is lies between this sequence okay so here you can see description of this particular gene that is crispr i validated for sexual means it is for for cis regulatory element okay and above side this is the gene name okay and this is gene id okay this is gene name this is gene id and this gene is responsible for validated for the cis regulatory element okay found on chromosome number 1 you can see here so now i have targeted only this uh, this particular gene for an example ki okay, i have targeted for this cis regulatory element gene so i have selected here this okay i've selected this particular gene now i want to know about the sequence of particular this but this particular gene so i have selected this and click here then you are able to see this is the particular information about this particular gene okay so here you can see the information about this gene all the the locus the gene symbol and a gene description validated for cis regulatory element gene type all these things information given here and in this table you are able to see this is present on chromosome number 1 here location is nc this is the location and it lies between this sequence here you can see okay so here you can also see like this the on the genome map where on chromosome number 1 it is located okay so from here this table this genomic sequence this locus and see this is chromosome number 1 reference id is this on p13 this is the assembly okay so now you can see this sequence of this particular gene start from here this is cis regulatory element okay so from here you can see this table shows this is the gene transcriptional cis regulatory gene title of this gene is this location is this and here you are able to see this is 457 nucleotide long it is the length of this particular gene okay so means from here to here it is 457 nucleotide in length okay so from here you can see from here it is start from 419 and at it 875 so from here it is also 457 nucleotide so here all the information like blast blast genome fasta now my query is i am very much curious about the sequence this particular sequence which sequence this is 5457 nucleotide so now i want to focusing i i am focusing only on this specific sequence that is 5 457 nucleotide in length so i want to know about this particular sequence means fasta format of this so you go here means fasta view this is the locus click here then the coming window will show you the sequence of this specific gene that is 457 nucleotide here you can see this is the 457 nucleotide long nucleotide sequence this is the sequence present on chromosome number 1 which is responsible for the cis regulatory element this is validated for cis regulatory element okay so this is the sequence so like this you can analyze all about the genome all about the genes with genes gene sequence apart by knowing all these things if you are knowing the sequence of the gene genome or particular organism then are you are able to identify the function of particular gene their gene regulation all these things can be identified for too many 
or we can say for many uh, importance okay so here you are seeing this is selected region okay not whole organism you are seeing here it is not whole organism it is selected region from chromosome number 1 and it is from 4192875 here you can see this sequence is from where 4192875 and it is 457 nucleotide in length okay so if you want to amplify this particular gene if you want to know yes this is the gene this is responsible for this particular function or this is is this responsible or not or we are already reading with the theoretically so if you are having such type of question means you want to study this particular gene so you can also pick primer to clone this gene okay so you can pick primer from along with this sequence okay so this primer designing will be discussed in detail in coming session by dr mrutunjay singh but i would like to give you a simple idea only not all these things about the primer designing only simple idea if you want to uh, design a primer for this particular gene so you go here this is pick primer if you click on pick primer this primer designing window will opens like this you can see here so in this window you can paste the sequence entire sequence of this gene that is 450 sequence in length the all sequence can be copied here paste here or this gene locus okay we can see so this gene locus here is showing power primer from 419 to 875 it's so about primer from here to from here i wanted to design a primer okay so all the information about the primers primer designing will be discussed in details by dr mrutunjay singh so from here if you click here you will get your primer so until unless you don't know about the all the uh, properties of the primer designing then you are unable to design a primer so first thing is to know all these things about the primers property or the primers this will be discussed in detail by the uh, dr mrutunjay singh so i think uh, now you are able to uh, analyze any organism or a species their genome their gene gene function so here i am stopping this live session you can do like this so now i would like to summarize my session so is visible my ppt visible prathun sir yes sir okay thank you so all about the summarization of this entire session that is first session of today and third session of the workshop so if you are able to know about the genome or gene sequence then you can do anything means this gene sequence if you have analyzed you know then you can predict its function you can manipulate it its activity and its expression you can do all these things and this genome sequence if you know it always provides the sequence of all genes of the organism so that you can know all the importance about the genes function of the gene necessity of this particular gene in the organism what is the cause of this gene okay then disease process can also be studied if you know the gene genome and gene sequence after identifying genes then you are freely means uh, you are able to identify heritable diseases which is uh, the, the disease caused by the genetic informations means these related uh, diseases cancers you can identify and identify genes responsible for traits means uh, you have uh, the question about the traits means this particular sequence responsible for height for color for this for skin for anything maybe means this particular sequence which we are calling gene is really responsible for this particular trait you can identify you can study it 
in the plants or animals, maybe in disease resistance or disease competence or in this uh, form of meat or milk production. This is few ones. There are many more as uh, many more uh, applications uh, of the gene or genome analysis. So overall, by summarizing my entire session, so if you want to analyze a particular uh, gene or, or genome of an organism, then first you decide a goal. In the goal, you decide an organism or a species. Okay. Then you decide a particular gene that you want to predict the function of that particular gene. Then first you decide organism, then analyze genome, means chromosome, then on chromosome that particular gene, then you decide a specific gene that you want to study, that you want to predict. Okay? Then according to your hypothesis, design experiment to test that particular prediction. Now you can do it because you are having all the information, genetic information about the genome of that uh, 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 organism, gene, gene sequence. Now you are having locus, all these things you are having. So now you can design and you can study. But you always know that if you are doing something, then you face some challenges, some difficulties like gene prediction, which gene, where this gene located, on which chromosome gene is located, what is sequence of that located gene. So all this type of uh, challenges may you face, like gene prediction, false genetic history of that gene, presence of repetitive sequence because all the genome contains so many repetitive sequences, then genome rearrangements. So at the end, I would say, that this particular session may help you for your future studies, your research purposes, and uh, I hope it will definitely help you. So thank you. Thank you very much. And this is the end of third session, today's third session. And now I would like to call Dr. Mrutunja Singh Assistant Professor, School of Biotechnology, RGPP Bhopal, to discuss about the primer designing. So now over to you, sir, Dr. Mrutanjya Singh. Before, sir, I would like to say, if you are having any query about this genome analysis, please type in chat box. I will try to satisfy all of your queries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for explaining genome map analysis in great detail. Good evening, participants. Now, we are discussing about primer designing. Is it my slides visible? Yes, yes, yes. sir. Okay. okay, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Now, we understand the pri about uh, primer by some questions, like what is primer? Then, primer is a short synthetic oligonucleotide, which is used in many molecular biology techniques. Then, why do we need primers? <coughs> the synthesis of primer is necessary because the enzymes that synthesize DNA, which are called DNA polymerases, can only attach the new DNA, new nucleotide to the existing strand of nucleotides at three prime end, where OH group are present. These DNA primer are commonly used to perform the polymerase chain reactions to copy pieces of DNA are for DNA sequencing purposes. Are primer DNA or RNA? Primers is short nucleic acid sequence that provide a, a starting point for DNA synthesis. 
in living organism primers are short strand of rna <laughs> so a primer must be synthesized by the enzyme called primase which is a type of rna polymerase before dna replication can start but in different techniques of uh, molecular biology we are using primer which is made up of single stranded dna why do we need a forward and reverse primer two primers that forward and reverse are we can call left and right primers to start the process of replication th these primers are designed to be complementary to the nucleotide sequences at the beginning and at the end of the section of dna which we want to amplify now can you amplify dna <coughs> sorry dna given only one primer it is possible to perform the pcr process using a single either forward or reverse primer to produce single strand dna however the quantity of dna obtained per cycle will be much lower by several power of 10 than that obtained in a traditional pcr amplification if you are having the experience of pcr you know that the you are using two primers that forward and reverse and in each cycle the number of template or product pcr product is just 2 to the power uh, each cycle multiplication like in first two in second cycle after the completion of second cycle it will be 4 and after completion of third it will be 8 and one important thing is there that you are getting after third cycle in pcr your first pcr primer pcr products single primer pcr is sometimes used to amplify an unknown dna segments that is adjacent to the known dna segments single primers <coughs> techniques are also used in pcr based cycle sequencing means single primer are used in uh, first of all in sequencing techniques and when we are having some unknown reason nearby uh, determined reason just use that determined reason for single primer uh, annealing and amplify that unknown reason which attached with them what makes a good primer good primers pcr primers strike a fine balance between specificity and amplification efficiency specificity is controlled primarily by timer length and annealing temperature for ideal amplification the best primers are in between 18 to 24 days basis long and the shorter the primer the more efficiently they can anneal to the target dna how do i know my primer specificity by using primer blast perform only a specificity check when a target template and both primers are provided in the primer pair specificity checking parameter section select the appropriate <coughs> Sorry. appropriate sources organism and the smallest database that is likely to contain the target sequence now how do you design a primer taking into consideration the information present primers should generally have following parameters like primer is specificity first only the length of primer is in between 18 to 24 it can be uh, more than 24 but in specific cases primer complexity a wide repeat reason in primer sequences primer gc content it should be in between 40 to 60% gc content in primer pair primer melting temperature that is tm is in between 55 to 65 degree centigrade tm of primer pair should not differ by more than 5 degree centigrade means your forward and reverse primers melting temperature is not differ from more than 5 degree centigrade ampli concise is 
for uh, better result is in between 100 to 250 basis primer location with respect to template means where you want to anneal your primers you must uh, mention or you just take that consideration about that from where you want to multiply your sequences start and end with one to two gc pairs the three prime end of primers should contains gc pair because it help to uh, annealing of primers and better uh, pcr products formation primer pairs should not have intra or inter complementary reason we discuss later this point length of the primer pair should not differ by three bases means if forward primer is having 18 nucleotide long the reverse is not more than 21 base pair long base bases long <laughs> now primer length what factors of it there are four bases in dna molecule that is all we know a c g t the probability of encountering any of these bases in the is 0.25 or 1 fourth. So let us to look at the probability of encountering a particular sequence of bases here, event and probability. If one base pair is there, the probability is 0.25. For two base pair, just multiply 0.25, multiply by 0.25, you get it 0 0.0625. Likewise, for 16 nucleotide long sequences it's 0.25 to power 16 that is <coughs> sorry this much so it is increasingly unlikely that one will get 16 bases in this particular sequence that means one chance in 4.3 billion sequences like <coughs> sorry <coughs> as we know the human uh, genome is uh, around 3 billion base long sequence means if, if we are having 17 nucleotide long oligo or primers it the chance of the anneal with your uh, genome sequence is one in this same way one can see that as the primer increases in size the chances of the match other than the one intended for is highly unlikely hence longer the primer more chance of being unique and highly specific but other factors are also to be considered like melting temperature what would happen if your primer is too long if the primer is too long annealing temperature will be too high because it depends upon gc content and number of bases present in primer chances of self complementarity will be higher because the probability of self complementarity of chances of repeat sequence are complement system uh, complement sequences are higher uh, when we increase the size secondary structure formation higher the uh, formation of secondary structures in primers are increases with increase the size of primer efficiency might decreases when we increase the size the shorter primers are more efficient hence primer length is usually recommended to be in between 18 to 24 nucleotide long for human sequences your primer is only as specific as annealing temperature you select even if you design a very specific primer it would still anneal at non-specific location if the tm is too low now avoid secondary structures when you design the primers three types are there hairpin loop cell complementary and primer dimers when uh, repeat sequence uh, are, are complement sequences are present in your primer sequence it bend and bind with the complement 
sequences like G uh, bind with C, and it will form hairpin loop. And this primer would not help in your PCR reaction. Self complementarity means your primers having if repeat se uh, sequence which opposite in nature like sequences here. Uh, if one primer is having G G A A and that uh, this primer is also having the repeat uh, opposite sequence of this sequence that C C T T then self complementarity means these primers are bind each other and third one is primer dimer this is also not utilized by uh, PCR reactions and primer dimer when uh, self complementarity uh, occurs in either forward or reverse primers but in case when uh, forward and reverse primers are uh, self complementarity at some bases then it will be form dimeric form that primer form primer dimer it also uh, disturb the pcr reaction the, the so the prime pairs are primer that primer 1 and 2 the sequence is uh, by 5 prime to 3 prime and having this sequence which is complementary to each other and when you mix these in pcr reactions this uh, primers primer 1 and 2 is just align like this and form a dimer. The primer dimer can be due to self complementarity of primers as well, usually in size of 40 to 60, because one primer length is around 20 nucleotide long. Decrease the efficiency of amplification of gene of our interest and usually more abundant in non template control and low template solution situations to overcome these problems just use stringent primer design means you just choose a most specific a highly specific primer primer concentration and template concentration just vary and uh, this uh, ratio and you will find the best result just choose that concentration ratio annealing temperatures that is for a uh, standardization of your annealing temperature, you just use first gradient PCR. Although you know the annealing temperature of your primer, but you first go with gradient PCR to check the best result of that. Use of hot start DNA polymerase, it will help to. Uh, overcome the prime <coughs> dimer problem because in hot start PCR polymerase uh, enzymes is working more than 45 degrees centigrade means at room temperature you didn't get any reactions PCR reactions primer melting temperature now it is by definition is temperature at which one half of the DNA duplex will dissociate to become single stranded and indicate the duplex stability. Primers with melting temperature in the range of 50 to 58 degrees centigrade generally produce the best results. Now, TM that is melting temperature that makes double stranded DNA is change in single stranded DNA. The 50% of double stranded DNA is change in single stranded DNA. Now we can calculate the TM by using this formula that 2 multiply by number of A plus T plus 4 multiply by number of G plus C. And when you find that your uh, melting temperature of primer just reduce value 5 from TM of your primer and you will get it the probable annealing temperature. Now, by using this formula, we can calculate this melting temperature here. <coughs> four, option, four 
examples are listed first one is having 20 nucleotide long where 11 g gc content that 11 multiply by 4 that is equal to 44 and 9 <coughs> is 80 that multiply by 2 that 18 to 44 plus 18 that is 62 and for an link temperature calculation you just reduce 5 from this 62 you will get 57 degree centigrade likewise this as you see the temperature melting temperature is dependent upon the length of the primers and gc content now reverse complement that reverse change nucleotide sequence from 5 prime to 3 prime to 3 prime to 5 prime means if you are having any sequence primer sequence like this you are having this sequence 5 prime to 3 prime just first complement tree sequence form that opposite of uh, uh, complement of this uh, se sequences and then reverse it the direction that first is 5 to 3 prime now 3 to 5 prime just change it to 5 to 3 that is g a c c t like and then reverse uh, com then form the complement of the reverse sequence and when you uh, form this all four sequences means like as such your primer sequence then complementary sequence of that primer then reverse sequence of that primer and then from reverse complementary system uh, sequence of that primers then you uh, check that primers to uh, your your uh, nucleotide sequences where you want to anneal because maybe that sen that uh, sequences sense are template or anti sense sequence or it in uh, orientation is uh, opposite so you must have first create to check all these four type of sequences of your primer and then just control f in that uh, nucleotide sequence of gene and put this four sequences and find it if any one of these is match with your sequence then that primer is uh, you are choosing is just uh, anneal with your sequence means that is right one for writing any nucleotide sequence you just use courier new that is suitable for the dna typing dna sequences now types of primers that first is oligos like example here oligos dt which is 16 to 20 t primers which are having used in when in case of poly a tail of mrna if we want to make a copy of this we just use this 16 to 20 bases long t sequences as oligos and on the basis of this the uh, rna polymerase is make the sequences second is random hexamer that means <coughs> sorry hexamer means six nucleotide is that we uh, random primer you just extend this formation of the sequences and third is gene specific primer which is generally we are using that is like uh, reverse and forward or left and right primers which bind with your sequences and pro uh, provide the three prime oh uh, group to dna polymerase to extend the polymerization no type of primer like on the basis of <coughs> their activity like universal primers universal primers as the name suggests the primers that can anneal with many different type of dna templates means the like the 16s rna uh, primers which is specific and universal you can using many 
different organism specific primers in case where the genetic sequence is already known or specific gene is the target a specific primer can be used to amplify the dna rather than universal primer the benefit of this is that the specific primer can be purposely designed to amplify a particular gene which gives a greater chance of successful pcr outcomes a specific primer are also known as type specific primers target specific primers or species specific primers that is degenerate primers are mixture of similar but not identical primers that are used to amplify a same gene from different organism alternatively degenerate primers are used when primer design is based on protein sequence as several different codons can code for one amino acid like four codons can code for leucine and which is differ at third positions which occupy by four different of nucleotides that u c a and g fourth is fluorescent label primers fluorescent label with the fluorescent tag like fam fluorosine x j rox <coughs> sorry see tamra tat and texas red used in downstream fragment analysis that is trflp and in sequence analysis in sequencing experiments these four fam jo rox and tamra having 488 nano meter wavelength excitation wavelength and having different all four having different emission uh, wavelength now these are the tools online tools for primer designing and analysis these are the list of the online tools like auto prime dicer substrate sirna genomic primers idt oligo analyzer idt primer quest net primer primer design primer blast primer 1 primer 3 primer x primo pro quanto prime rf cloning s fold ussc in silico pcr and primers for clades now we are going to live with primer 3 and primer blast to design our primer for given target sequence primer 3 is widely used program for designing pcr primer that is polymerase chain <coughs> so reactions pcr is essential and ubiquitous tool in genetic and molecular biology primer 3 can also design hybridization probes and sequencing primers pcr is used for many different goals as already discussed now just type primer 3 in google window you will get it the link to open the prime 3 input file for you just click on that you will find the home page of this tool where a box is there where you put your sequences for that you want to create your primers now just like this sequence which i copy in word for is first exam sequence with some nearby sequences red sequences exam sequences and nearby sequences because i want to enable my primers in uh, nearby sequences to amplify my exams completely so i select this 335 bases long nucleotide from where 255 long nucleotide is having exam one reason just copy it in this box and 
if you are having any characteristics you want to change because it is all auto select you can change but you must have specific information about that just uh, sir my presentation is visible now google uh, account is not visible google is not no sir google is not visible your presentation is visible okay okay is it visible now primer 3 block yes yes okay now open first google then type here primer 3 and then open this and you will find the home page of this online tool where a box is there where you just post your just paste your sequences for where, for you want to create a primer pair i'm just pasting a 335 base long sequence of exon 1 of ace gene human ace gene having 255 base long plus nearby sequences complete sequence is 335 and scroll down and just click pick primer and you will find out the primer sequences with this this arrow shows your primer sequence annealing point and for uh, forward primer and this is for reverse these are the characteristics of your primer for left primer that is forward primer is start from 20th nucleotide of the sequence and right primer is start from 189 nucleotide of given sequences length of primer is 18 and 20 left and right and tm is 61 and 59 and sequence is this other some other option are also available you just check it and choose your best one and now open again google and type primer last and just click this primer blast ncbi nih link you will find out this and here also a text box where you just paste your sequence with on the basis of this sequence you want to create you can choose file if you save your sequence file in fasta format in your system you can by click to cho uh, choose file you can select that file also and just put here the number of nucleotides from where from to to plus where you want to your primers any in between that i want in between 1 to 41 nucleotide base long 1 to 41 nucleotide primer is designed in between these sequences and reverse primer is from 263 nucleotide to 335 nucleotide in between my reverse primers must be annealed with my target sequence then 
just get primers it will take 2 3 minutes and the result is display like this like 10 primer pairs are given in a graphical view of primer pairs that if you just place your cursor on any arrow you will find the characteristics of that primer pairs or you scroll down and you will find the detailed primer reports like primer pair 1 for forward primers these are the sequences the product length means pcr product length is 278 base pair long and length of primer is 16 and 20 start from 18 and 295 nucleotide and a stop place then tm and gc content all things are provided here now this one from 10 primer pairs and check by blast if you are using primer 3 you must check that by using that sequence by using blast to any with your target sequences are not if you are using primer blast that it will automatically provide you result which is blast with which is any with your sequences these are the screenshot of uh, the already mentioned result and these are the references Thank you for your question sharing. Any questions? Just write down in chat box. Sir, so slides are not visible. Yes. Slides are not visible, sir. Slides are not. these are the screenshot of already discussed online tool result for primer blast <laughs> sorry these are the references thank you if any questions just write down in chat box now i invite shivangi shivasto for seeing okay there is one question in the chat box Rajkumar Singh has written some question kindly go through that okay yes uh, generally pcr the sequence is necessary to generate the primer pair but as already discussed for single primer if you are having not known the target sequences just use nearby known sequences and any any your single primers which amplify that unknown sequences or uh, one degenerate primer already discussed where you just use the on the basis of protein or uh, express protein sequence you just modify the sequence which uh, already uh, amplified in other organism for same protein or protein product how can we generate the arbitrary primers for the unknown nucleotide sequence no no uh, just discuss already no for unknown nucleotide sequence if you are uh, having nearby known sequences use th that sequences to um, create a primer pair to amplify your known unknown sequences and then sequence it and just determine the sequences of unknown sequence any query please ask <laughs> yes, 
one thing when we are determining the sequence one thing we can see must consider in sequencing experiment initial 30 30 to 40 yeah 50 base sequences are not fully determined means if you want to determine num uh, from sequence number 51 you just choose before 50 sequences to uh, enable your primer because first 50 sequences are not fully determined are fully um, confident sequences to tell you the right sequences in your nucleotide in your nucleic acids any other question you can unmute yourself and ask how to design primer if you want to go for protein purification protein pu purification is different things for protein purification you first provide first make proteins in different organisms oh, oh, oh. And Dr. Mrithunjay, may I? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Because every gene is expressed in the form of protein. Whatever the gene anybody has selected for that particular gene, there is a requirement of primer. Okay, because this is the basic concept. Every gene is expressed in the form of protein. Am I right? So whatever the gene selected, whatever the fragment of that gene was selected. on the basis of which the primer designing takes place yes ma'am we already discussed about that the degenerate primer that if we, uh, we are having uh, any other species making a different a, a protein product like if they are making insulin and we want to uh, amplify insulin gene in human we can use that reason of uh, other our uh, species are are, are absolutely to, very to form your uh, primer pair for a human insulin gene it very may be not uh, you success in first attempt attempt you must have to choose many uh, different primer pairs to um, uh, and amplify uh, your pcr result in best way and use gradient pcr also to uh, suitable for suitable annealing temperature provide very good any other query by any other participant so shall we proceed Dr. Pranjaya, kindly invite Ms. Shivangi Shivasta for the next presentation. Thank you, sir, for inviting me for my uh, topic that is protein design. So please stop sharing. So I will share my slides. thank you so much sir for the fruitful knowledge about the primer design now uh, i will start about uh, the designing of protein as like primer design protein design is also useful so here are some theory we should clear on that and after uh, clearing the theory part we will go for protocol uh, for uh, performing a protocol and we will uh, just design a protein so first of all what is protein design in the simple way th this definition will work like protein design is the rational design of new protein molecule to design novel activity behavior purpose and to advance basic understanding of protein functions 
if you'll go uh, for uh, the language of bioinformatics, then it will provide the definition like protein design represents one approach for understanding how the pattern of pairwise residue couplings inferred from the statistics of natural sequence is related to the encoding of protein structure and as well as function. As we all know, the primary structure, the beauty of 3D, uh, three dimension of any protein is encoded by the primary structure. So if you change of amino acid sequence, it will result in the change in the three dimension structure. Either you will change a bond, either you will change amino acid, or you will take, uh, you will change, uh, you will uh, do any change by side directed mutagenesis. So protein can be designed with different methodology using different softwares that are present online and tools. So for that, uh, first of all, we have to know uh, in brief, like what are uh, the four structure of protein? That is a primary structure. The primary structure of protein are those which, uh, in which amino acids are linked together with peptide bonds. It contains only covalent bond and they are linear in structure. Secondary uh, structure are divided into two parts or they are as like uh, they are divided in two parts or we can say that they are of two types like alpha helix as well as beta pleated sheets. So it contains the covalent bonds and hydrogen bond. As we uh, see here, here is the spiral shape and here is the zigzag shape. So for uh, making the spiral shape, uh, the hydrogen bonding takes place in different amino acids. Tertiary structure, which contains so many bonds. Twisting and folding of amino acid produces tertiary structure. That is a beauty uh, of an amino acid or uh, that's showing the beauty of an amino acid bonding. So it contains a lot of bonds like covalent bond. That is a peptide bond, which is present uh, in between the pep, uh, uh, amino acid. Hydrogen bond, here is the hydrogen bond, which is showing uh, in between two amino acid in the different places. Ionic bond is also the bond forming in this part of the protein is hydrophilic. And this is the hydrophobic bond, which show the hydrophobicity of a protein. And disulfide bonds, as we all know, cysteine uh, join together with the disulfide bond and produces cysteine. So whenever cysteine come in another con uh, come in the contact of another cysteine, then it will produce this disulfide bond and it produces a complex structure. So uh, the main bond uh, for the uh, for the three dimension structure is cysteine. I'm oh, sorry, disulfide bond. And what are the quaternary? Quaternary are those which contains four subunits of different structure. Either it may contain the secondary structure, primary structure, as well as the tertiary structure. So it contains hydrogen bond between the two amino acid, salt bridges between the two subunits, and disulfide bonds that holds the various chain in a particular geometry. This is the basic about protein. So here is the brief description that I didn't mention about all the uh, type of proteins. Uh, first one is protein like gene don't exist as linear sequence of molecules, but assume complex, compact 3D shape. As I told you, the primary structure encodes the beauty of any uh, and the structure of an amino acid, sorry, is a protein. So for that protein shape or configuration are characterized as secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. Primary structure configuration, the simple linear sequence of covalently bound amino acid is functionally uninterested for protein modeling. But, but we, will, uh, do, uh, we will do mutation in primary structure. The secondary structure is the local geometry along the sequence typically in the form of either in sheets, coils, loops, and helix. Most protein are composed of a combination of secondary structures. And a protein's tertiary structure describes how the molecule folds in three dimension. 
and quaternary structure describes the complex configuration of a protein that is interacting with other molecules in 3d space so the first question is uh, of any experiment is why we do this and why would why we design the protein so here are some examples why we do for studying the cat uh, catalytic mechanism for designing and improving ligands for docking of macromolecules prediction of protein partners for virtual screenings and docking of small ligands for defining antibody epitopes for molecular replacement in x-ray crystallography for changing their structure in vitro for designing chimeras as stable and crystallizable variants for supporting site directed mutagenesis as we all know site directed mutagenesis is that muta mutation which takes place at a particular site that we know that, that particular site so in the known part, uh, site we have to uh, mutate it that as like uh, if we want to mutate a bond or if we uh, want to mutate an an amino acid uh, either it will be deletion it will be using the deletion insertion etc so on that will come in the site directed mutagenesis and for refining the nmr structures of protein for fitting into low resolution electron density for structure from sparse experimental restraints for functional relationship from structural similarities for identifying patches of conserved surface residues and astron is for finding its functional site by 3d motif searching so how we do this design so the functional character there are some points from which we can conclude it how we uh, design a protein so functional characterization of a protein sequence is one of the most frequent problem in biology this task is usually facilitated by an accurate three dimension structure of a studied protein or in the absence of an experimentally determined structure for that we are using homology modeling or the, uh, also known as the comparative modeling for uh, designing a protein it often uh, provides a useful 3d model for a protein that is related to at least one known protein so what is that comparative modeling predicts the 3d structure of a given protein sequence so we can say that this is a target protein which we from which we have to design and based primarily on its alignment to one or more protein of known structure so we will conclude it as a template we are using template for producing a protein for designing a protein so for all that there are some steps which are taking place in homology modeling these are the basic steps which are taken by many softwares which we are going to use so first of all start modeling second is identifying the related structure of the protein after that we have to select templates by different uh, methodology or we can say that uh, by checking their different features or um, by homologous nature align that target sequence with template structure now build a model for the a target using information from template structure the last step is evaluate the model but if your model is okay then your homology modeling is done and your, your protein is to be is designed but if it is not okay then you will go for the third step again again align the target sequence with template structure and the process will take place again and again so as i mentioned the steps like template se uh, selection align men and uh, mod building a model so here are some description about uh, the uh, about these steps that are used in homology modeling so first one is it is the first step of uh, comparative modeling so it involves a searching a template database from the closest match or matches to the new target molecule based on the target amino acid sequence the goal of template selection is to discover a link between the target protein and a known protein structure this usually involves the use of a protein structure template 
databases such as pdb and there are so many uh, database uh, for uh, each step i'll show you in the next step so the selecting an appropriate group of database entries from the database to service structured templates is typically based on some form of sequence comparison or threading so what are threading these are some uh, these are the picture of some template protein so here is the uh, answer of threading like threading involves aligning the sequence of a target protein with the 3d structure of a template to determine whether the uh, amino acid sequence is specially or chemically similar to the template so for that pairwise sequence comparison will done for template selection so it involves the searching section of the template candidate for amino acid sequences that are similar to sequences in the target protein so when we are going to do this a key discussion in sequence comparison is how similar is similar enough so multiple sequence comparison realizes on an iterative algorithm that expands the template search to include all reasonable candidate templates from the template database as a result multiple sequence comparison is more sensitive because you can get more and more template for that so from which you have to select your appropriate template and more likely to find suitable template in the template database as i told you after this how to align so here is the alignment the goal of the it is the second step of comparative modeling in, in which uh, its goal is to align the sequence of polypeptides in the target sequence with that of the template structure in order to position the target and template in the same 3d orientation so we can merge them and design a protein many of the alignment procedures are based on dynamic programming techniques often supplemented with manual methods based on visual inspection of the molecules after that how to build a model so here are some views on model building first of all when uh, yeah, once the library of template uh, templates that match the target protein have been identified the actual model model building or assembly can begin 